Hi, I'm Marianne Redpath. I'm head of Berlinale Generation. And it is my great pleasure today to talk to the US director, Jamie Sisley, who has made the wonderful film Stay Awake, which will screen in the Generation 14 Plus program in this edition. It's his first feature, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to say to us today. Hi, Jamie. How are Hi, you? Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Doing, and um, it's a real I'm pleasure well. to, to, to meet up with you today. Congratulations on your fantastic film. And thank you for letting us screen it in Generation 14 Plus this year. It's a, it's a very important film. Um, for some reasons, we will have a time to discuss, hopefully. Um, but before we go on to talk about the film, um, I want to say you are not a stranger to the Generation uh, program and to the Berlin Ali. So we screened your short film with the same title, Stay Awake, um, 2015, right? That's yeah? right. Did yeah. I do my maths? Okay. And uh, <laughs> so I can imagine it's been a really interesting journey since then to get your feature length, your first feature up um, with the same name. And I, having seen both of them, I know there are a lot of uh, threads and similarities. Can you talk about the journey, just a little bit about the journey between short film and feature film? Yeah, sure. Um, well, first, thanks for, thanks for having me here. I appreciate it. Uh, it's really nice to see you. Um, yeah, it, it's, I think when I made the short film, the, the, both the short and the feature are sort of based on my upbringing with my mom and my brother. And, um, I think the short at first was sort of, I think that's kind of where I wanted to end exploring this story in general. And then when I, when I actually came to the Berlinale, uh, and, and started to play the short, uh, it's funny. I kind of became like the festival therapist. All of these people started to come out and want to talk about addiction uh, because it's sort of a taboo subject and people don't really have an opportunity to talk about it. And that really inspired me. So I, I started to kind of think about what a feature would look like, um, you know, and, and if, if that's something I wanted to pursue. And, and um, I think a lot of people, you know, were very supportive of that. It, it, it takes a long time, I think, to get a short into a feature. Um, I had a friend tell me a couple of years ago, you know, four years is probably a good average. And I didn't understand why that would be the case. And, and now I absolutely do <laughs> six years later. Uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot of things that have to come together. There's a lot of, um, there's just, a, there's, it's, it's a much bigger undertaking um, from a production standpoint. Yeah. Uh, but the stories are all the same, I think, you know, and, and, um, and that, part, that part feels good. I, I think we were able to sort of keep the integrity of, of what this film's about and, and why we're making this film. Um, I think that's still intact, if not even more than the short. And COVID came along in the middle of the process. Oh boy, did it. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, there were so many stops and starts with um, trying to make this movie. Um, you know, it, we, in order, you know, there's financing and all, and all these different things. It kind of feels like the stars just have to align perfectly to, to, to have everything sort of coalesce so that you can do this. And at one point we had the financing and then we had the actors and the actors couldn't do it because of COVID. COVID was very restrictive. I mean, a lot of, we were fortunate enough to have some really talented actors that are a part of TV shows or other movies. And, Mm. You know, they were restricted because because of, it was, you know, as, as we're all aware of, you know, it, it was very dangerous for a while and yeah. people didn't know what was happening. And so we just had to be patient. And luckily, we had a lot of people who stuck with us, who, you know, they said they would and they did um, so that we could make this movie uh, this past year. And we're very grateful for that. Yeah, thank God they did. And thank God you pulled it off. Congratulations Thanks. again. No. Now we're going to talk about the film. Okay? Um, okay. Stay awake. And to kick that off, I'm going to show you, we're going to watch together the first clip that you sent us, and then we're going to talk about what we've seen. So can we okay. have the first clip, please? Raindrops are falling on my head. And just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed. Hey, stay no, awake, seems Ma, to listen to us. Those raindrops are falling on my head. They keep falling. This is easy. You know this. Ma? Raindrops are falling on my head. Come on, what's that one? Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids. There we go. All right, next one. Come on, uh, let's go. Everybody is talking, talking at me. <laughs> I don't hear a word they're saying. 
Only the echoes of mama. Come on, ma, that's a softball. I'm going where the sun keeps shining through the pouring rain. I'm going where the weather suits my clothes. What's that one from, huh? Come on, what's that one? You know it. Cowboy man. Judges, can we give that to her? Close enough. All right, next one. Let's go. Okay, so um, what I would like to ask you to do, um, um, sort of uh, moving on from that clip, is to um, give that clip some context by describing the film to us. Sure. So, so you know, Stay Awake is really about um, two brothers uh, who are, are trying to help their mom overcome uh, her prescription drug addiction. And um, it's like I said, it's sort of based on my life with my mom and my brother. And um, I think a lot of the times I've seen, whenever I see movies about addiction, it's always from the point of view of the addict. Every single time, this is something that happened a lot when I was growing up. I wanted to, I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to feel, I, I wanted to feel a part of something because it, it, it's a very lonely experience trying to help a loved one through addiction. Um, and so, uh, you know, when I had the opportunity to make a movie, I wanted to change the point of view and really make this about the caretakers, the loved ones, people who, um, you know, who are trying to help their family members uh, through, through addiction. And so this is the very beginning of the film. And it's I, I try to really kick it off that way. This is really about these two young these two young brothers, um, try, you know, and, and uh, both trying to bring their mom to the hospital because um, she's potentially overdosing. But to me, it's really about their relationship. You know, I, I think that's what I try to show in this film, the dynamics and how um, this is a tough situation for two young, young people, but uh, they're also very close. And I think sometimes tough situations like these can bring people together. Okay, um, so you've mentioned that it's a personal story. Um, and I wonder in the process of making it, how con fronting that would have been for you personally and also how liberating perhaps? That's a great question. I, um, yeah, I think, I think it was very tough. It, to be honest with you, the screenwriting part process was really tough. That was the hardest part. Uh, I think you have to uh, really sit with your, with your demons <laughs> when you're by yourself at the desk uh, and it makes you think a lot about your past and, and what that meant to you and how it might have affected you. Um, and, and so that, that was very difficult. Um, but I think I drew a lot of conclusions that, that were very helpful. But at the same time, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want to make this film just a very expensive uh, therapy session for myself. You know, you, you, want, you, want to, you, you want to figure out ways that this might help other people through it. And, um, I think that part was liberating. I think uh, the more I've gone through this process of writing and directing Stay Awake, you, you, you connect with so many other people who have been in similar situations. And um, that part's been, that, that's been the most liberating and, and maybe gratifying part to me is I felt very alone on, about this subject when I, mm. before I started even the short. And now that we've sort of gotten here, it's really been amazing to how open people are talking about this subject and they know you're making a movie about it. Yeah, you mentioned also the point of view, the telling of the story through the, through the eyes and the experiences of the two brothers who are in the middle of um, coming of age during the film as well. One yeah. thing I'd like to say is I think it is really important that you have done that and also the audiences, the same age audiences, will um, very much uh, relate to what they are seeing because they will see their story. So I think it can be quite helpful and also as well as being a really good film and super entertaining and, and a good watch. Um, so growing Thanks. up, um, coming of age, um, I often say um, when I'm talking to the press, um, growing up can be beautiful as well as difficult at the same time. It's, it's so full of so many steps that need to be made and so many insecurities and decision making and, and direction Listness, and I think uh, <laughs> placing your two main um, uh, characters um, with an addictive mother um, 
is, is a really interesting confrontation and very moving confrontation in terms of growing up and making those decisions. Um, um, would you say that those, by the end of the story, they, um, they are taking the right steps in order to get on with their own lives? Yeah, I think so. I, I you know, there's this um, cycle of codependency that sort of happens in this in this film that I wanted to explore, um, and how there's actually all of these different dynamics when it comes to addiction. That and oddly, in a lot of weird ways, mirrored like drama dynamics when you're writing. I, mm -hmm. They're actually very closely aligned. It's very yeah. strange, uh, and you know, I, I I think what happened, what I'm hoping sh shows in the movie is these dynamics shift, you know, depending on how the addict is dealing with their addiction. You know, sometimes you're the aggressor, you're angry at, at the addict. Sometimes you're the codependent. And hopefully this film sort of shows the roller coaster ride that people have to go on when, when all of those ch changes occur with someone that you love who's battling addiction. Because it really is, at least in my experience, you have to be very patient. You know, sometimes they're doing well, sometimes they're not. And, um, my hope, though, is that by the end, there's a little bit of hope in the film's ending that that um, both both young men have sort of figured out a way to um, I don't want to say liberate themselves, but but sort of you know realize that they need to sort of um, not fully sacrifice themselves for the sake of someone that they love because that in the end of the end of the, end of the day it's not good for them either. It's not good for anyone. You sort of have to you know yes. get out there on your own. It's super complicated, isn't it? The codependency cycles that you're talking about. Um, and yeah. I think that um, um, watching the film, I became aware of that um, also in our society here in Berlin and, and Germany, that it's a big issue. Um, perhaps not the opioid uh, crisis, which is happening in, um, in the States. Um, how big is it there? It's pretty big. Um, I think it's, uh, when I first started, even w w when the short went to the Berlinale, I, di I didn't feel like people understood how prevalent the opioid crisis was in America. Now I feel like they do. It, there's actually been a remarkable amount of notoriety over the last, you know, five, five to seven years on this subject. What, what I, um, well, I'll also say something that surprised me whenever the short would travel was how prevalent it was in other parts of the, of the world as well. I actually mm. think that this this epidemic is a lot bigger than people think outside of the US. But while I'm glad that the opioid epidemic has received a lot of attention, uh, one, one thing that I hope this film might bring to light a little bit in the ways that films can do or not do um, is there's a whole bigger conversation here to be had about prescription drug addiction. For example, I remember growing up and um, I'd watch a lot of television and they would always make jokes about Xanax. Like, you know, it's time to pop another Xanax or somebody give me a Xanax. And I, you know, and in the other room, my mom would be passed out from Xanax. Uh, it, 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 there's a lot of other drugs out there that are non-opioid uh, mm -hmm. that I, I think are just as dangerous because they're prescribed by doctors and people, people, it's more socially acceptable than maybe recreational drugs. And I, I think those need to now come to light a little bit too. Um, I think it's really dangerous because people don't, if you, have an addic if you have an addictive mindset, I think it's really easy to get trapped into addiction with those kinds of drugs because they're just, people don't understand the dangers of them like others. Yeah, it is complex, isn't it? Basically, and it's everywhere. Um, let's get back to the film. Um, sure. I love how you work together with your three main cast. That's uh, with Derek and Ethan, the two boys, and their mom, yeah. Michelle. Um, I think uh, you, you, you have a very a talent, a, a great talent for embracing your characters, making them feel comfortable with where they're at, with your script mm. and with your film. And um, I really appreciate also the way in which you have used um, uh, shadow and light and dark and to bring humour into it. Um, and to, before we... I'm going to show you the second clip and then I'd like to talk to, to you about the humour element because I think it's, it, it lightens sure. things up a little bit when we're talking about these dark topics. So let's see the second clip, please. Can you grab me something? Yep. 
So, you got any homework? Allow me to rephrase. How much homework do you have? I got a 10-page book report due Thursday, which I'm screwed for, so please. You're the kid who cries C minus and always gets an A. Hated your kind in school. So what's the book? Uh, Animal Farm. I like the movie. I think you're thinking Animal House. They're different? Just a little. Okay, so um, here we have the two brothers. Um, they're obviously, I think they've just brought their mum to into the hospital. They managed to round her up and they're having a moment together. I, I love the, the intimacy that you show between two young men who really know each other very well in this situation. And um, also the lightness of touch. Um, before I mentioned humour, um, the idea, the, the, the lightening up of the serious topic. Um, can you talk about that, how you use that in your film? Sure. I, uh, honestly, I just felt like a very authentic and natural, naturalistic way to sort of show how um, my brother and I kind of went through this process. I, I think uh, humor can be very cathartic. And, it, and, and I just remember a lot of times growing up with, with Evan, my brother, um, where all, you know, things get so bad that all you can do is just laugh <laughs> at the situation. Um, and I thought about that and, and a lot of other people I know can relate to that. I think humor is a great remedy for, um, I think it keeps you stable uh, in, in situations that could, could really spiral. Um, and so I tried to translate that as best I could in, into this story, um, you know, I ho hopefully it shows. And last question, um, which springs to mind. In the process of making the film, um, uh, did you have surprises along the way? And did the film turn out as you expected it or as you didn't expect it? Huh. Um, yeah, I think, I think tons of surprises. I mean, I, I'm, I, I have so much to learn about filmmaking. You know, it, this is the, hopefully I'll get to make more. Um, but I, what, I've, what I realized is, you know, you, you over prepare and then there's just so many things that are out of your control and it's a team, it's a team endeavor. It's a collaboration. So, and, and that can be beautiful. I, I know a lot of people who, who push against it because they, they have their idea, but I found there's actually a lot of beauty in embracing uh, the surprises. And I have just incredible collaborators, the producers, my cinematographer, I get to work with costume design, everybody. I could go down a long, long list. Um, but they bring surprises that that just that just wow you, you know. Um, and and so that happened every literally every day uh, while we were shooting and and editing. I mean, it, it still continues. It continued right up to yesterday. Um, and that's that's a beautiful part of making making film and making art. I think. Um, and did it turn out the way I I thought it would? No, not really. I I. It, when I first started to see uh, the performances, I thought every actor really took ownership of their character. And I, I guess as a director, you have a decision to make. You can either try to make them adhere to what you had in your head, or you can take, I think, this approach that screenwriting is sort of a blueprint and, and that people bring their own, th themselves into their characters and that goes for every position, for the cinematographer, for the costume designer. For, and I think that's a really good way to, to think about it. Because I think you get, you get the best out of people when, when, when they approach their work that way. Um, you kind of become a composer, I think. Uh, I feel weird talking about this because it's like, it's like I'm some old wise owl who's made like 50 movies. I have it. I, I, this is just for my one experience. But this, that felt really good to me. And I think because of that or that orchestration of all of these people, it turned in, it was different. And I think I'm really proud of what we all made together. Um, I, what I do think it does is it still embodies 
what I wanted this film to say and what I wanted it to uh, feel. And, and I, I think what I wanted people to hopefully take away from it, I think that's still there. And so that, made, that makes me very happy. That's a wonderful answer. You can be proud. So our time has Thanks. unfortunately come to an end. I do hope that you will go on making more films, but first of all, we're going to screen the premiere, the world premiere of Stay Awake uh, next week in Berlin, and I believe you're coming. So looking forward to continuing our conversation. Thank you very much, Jamie, for your beautiful words and your words of wisdom. And you are a bit of a wise old <laughs> owl, I'm afraid. <laughs> You'll have to wear that hat. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Well, uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thanks for speaking with me. And, and again, thank you for having to stay awake at the Berlinale. We couldn't be more excited. Okay.